Okay, so we jumped over to page two of the handout, and we talked about goals, getting conversions. How do we know we're being we're using Twitter effectively? How do we know we're using this blog effectively? Well, that's when we back up to page one of the handout, and we'll be talking about setting up the webmaster tools. Nowadays, it's harder to be found by potential clients. There's just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So I've got two sections, one on Google, one on Bing. As I said before, we're going to be targeting both Bing and Google for traffic. Because together, combined, they have about 80% market share. Google by itself is only 60%, and Bing has about 20% and increasing. So we might as well learn about how to optimize to both of the big search engines. Yahoo used to have the biggest market share. They had like 80% market share when the web was smaller. Now they're lower. They're like, I don't know, 10%, 8% or something. But they nowadays have contracts with Bing and Google, and they get results from them anyway. So if you do a Yahoo search, you're probably still going to get results that came from Bing or Google. So if we optimize for those two search engines, we're reaching like 90% of the audience. And within these sections, both of them have a direct link to the webmaster guidelines. Let's take a quick look at the first link here, webmaster guidelines. If you click on that first link, that goes over to, we'll look at it briefly, you can look at it on your own. But that goes over to the website here where it's the Search Console help, all of the detailed articles, the fundamentals, what's new, what's changed, all of this that you can read out on your own, video tutorials and everything. I'm not going to go through it in detail, you should at some time. That's on the handout. Basically, those are the details straight from Google. What we will do in a moment, we will set up this free account so that we can verify our site ownership, so we can tell Google and Bing, this is our website, this is my website, give me the data of my website so I can understand my traffic. I can understand what works, what doesn't. They'll give you that data. You just have to verify it, and we're going to do that together. So again, last week I said, bring your password so we can log into your site to do this. If you aren't able to do so, no problem. Just follow along, and when you do have your website, you can do it. But we're going to claim ownership of the business. It's not really that complicated to do, but it always helps to have a guide, and that's what, we're, that's what I'm going to do in just a moment. There's this concept of sitemaps that's also important. We'll get into more detail about them later, but basically this is a way for the search engines to know everything about your website, and all the content that's on your website to help the search engines get you found by potential uh, search searchers. We'll look at that a little bit later. And then two links here, one directly to Webmaster Tools and one to Analytics. How many of you before this class heard of the term Google Analytics. Raise your hand. Okay, most people. How many of you before this class heard of either Google Webmaster Tools or Google Search Console? Very few. Okay, so we're going to look at both of these, and at the moment Google separates them into two different tools, two different websites. It's highly recommended to set both of them up. Bing, on the other hand, sort of, sort of combines them both into one. There's only going to be one login for Bing. There are multiple logins for Google. They have all the products spread out into so many logins. It's kind of annoying. But they're the big search engine. They've been around longer than Bing. We're going to use both. On the Bing section, it's very similar. There's also a link there directly to their webmaster help. If you click it to look at it briefly, you're going to see the same sort of thing. Here's the do's and don'ts. Here's why you want to use it. Here's how to set it up. Here's how all of that. We're going to look at this in more detail in a bit. <clears throat> but I have those direct links, and you can always search them. Um, search them yourself. 
we'll get back to that later. But I've got the link there for the guidelines. We will also add and verify our site just like Google. We will also set up a site map. I have the recommendation here, however. Site map is actually a complicated document. It's written in, in XML code. Um, it's not really something that you're going to write by hand. You usually use software, like WordPress can make sitemaps, or other things like Squarespace and such. You really wouldn't do this yourself. You wouldn't write it by hand. Even I, that have been, I've been doing this since 2001, so 15 years, I wouldn't try to write a sitemap myself. It's too complicated. But we've got a plugin that can do it for you. We'll talk about that in more detail. But we've got sitemaps, and they're important. As we've been talking, we need to engage in SEO, which is on your site. We need to engage in SEM, which is outside of your site. Therefore, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. We need to engage in that as well. And Bing provides a way for us to also plug in our address for Twitter, or Facebook, or my Android app, or iPhone app. Plug in those channels, those avenues, into my search console here, and I can, sh I can see the traffic that comes from my Twitter, the traffic that comes from my app, or whatever. So I'm going to link additional sites to my Bing account so that I can see the traffic coming from it to see it's not working on Twitter. I either have to try harder on Twitter or give it up and just focus on Instagram. I won't know what's effective or what's not without this data. We can get this data all for free. We just need to set it up. And then there's the direct link. There's only one, bing.com slash toolbox. Google has two logins that we need to go through. This one's only got one. So what I'm going to do is show for the whole class as best as possible. We'll, I'll, I'll guide us to a certain point, and then usually then we have to stop, and I help people individually because everyone's got a different kind of website. I build time into the second day to help people individually. So we'll get started in general, and then we'll get specific with people. And what we'll do first is set up Bing. Once we set up one first, we can set up the other relatively easy. And so the address here, it's, I've got it on the handout, but the address is simply, let's go to our web browser and let's go to bing.com slash toolbox. We'll just click the link. And we'll go to the web address, bing.com slash webmaster. So if we're able to, if you didn't bring your password, we can at least start the process. So hopefully we can all do this at this point. And these computers are, are safe. If you're, not, if you're not comfortable putting in your login information and such, okay, you can wait to do it at home. But when these computers turn off, they reset back to factory settings. If, you've got, if you forgot to log out, our computer will log you out and erase all your cookies and everything. We've got this software called Deep Freeze. This little polar bear on the bottom right corner staring at you is deep freeze. The computer is frozen. When you restart it, everything erases back to factory settings. So if you're not comfortable logging in and such, you can do it at home, but we've got deep freeze. On this screen here, it asks us either to sign in or sign up. If you have a Hotmail account, an Outlook account, any Microsoft account, we have access to this faster. You just click sign in and you sign in. If you don't have a, an, an, a Microsoft account, let's say you have Yahoo or Gmail or Cox or whatever, you can still access this. You would do sign up with Microsoft account. I'll show both of those in a moment, but I want to make a note here. Sign up now and receive $100 credit towards search marketing on Bing. Remember on day one, I said easy way to do SEO, hard way to do SEO. The easy way is you pay. You pay to get higher ranking. Bing is going to give you $100 to sign up, $100 to engage in some of that paid advertising. That's nice. Google doesn't do that. Um, so that's one enticement to start up with this. Um, either or, either sign in if you have a, an Outlook account or Hotmail, or sign up. If you choose to sign up, you can use your existing address, 
you can create an account and then it'll say you can use your existing email address if you've already got a Yahoo account or whatever you can use it there to create the account no problem or if you want to create a brand new email account Outlook email, Hotmail email, whatever. So let me pause for a moment. If you're able to, let me give you a chance to either sign in or sign up. Let's spend like maybe one or two minutes. Just sign in or sign up. And then on the next screen, I will show us what we need to do. Does anyone have any trouble signing in or signing up? If you manage to sign in, you're basically going to see a blank screen. In a moment, we will add a website and such. <coughs> we'll go through the process of verifying it because if you think about it, can I do this from my competitors? Can I see the traffic of my competitors? We'll see why or why not in a moment, but make sure you sign in or sign up, and then I'll show you what we do next. Am I supposed to click on your new or audio the gray box? Click on what? There's a gray box that says new, and on the gray box below is the audio. Hmm. Doesn't quite sound right. Let me see that just one moment. Let's see. What this is saying is this digital sheet of new portion of the scene. Right, well, I'm going to this right now. Yeah, if you can't see what that looks like. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so hopefully you've logged in. If not, that's okay. We'll catch up, but we're going to go, go on here. Um, this screen eventually will show my website and a bunch of statistics about the traffic of my website. Before I get that, I either, at the top here, have a box that, said, that says Add Site, or a button that says add your site. They should both do the same, but I'm going to click the big button in the center of the screen. I'm going to click there, add your site. It asks 
for the URL, the address of my site. So here I'll type the name of my website. And it asks for a sitemap. Now this one is optional at the moment. URL is required, of course, and the sitemap is optional. What the sitemap is, is basically, again, as I said, a list of every page on your website. So let me ask you this. Let's say you visit another city, and you visit the local mall. And you want to find a specific store in that strange new mall. How many of you would wander the mall until you find it, as opposed to go to the store directory, find the store, and go directly to the shop? Probably that... Uh, that is, most of you will go to that directory, find your store on that map, and go directly to the map. Go directly to the store. That's sort of what a sitemap is. It has a mapping, it has a listing of every page on your site, and therefore the search engines can find the right content on your site, so that when someone searches for, um, you know, what is, or how to use the new page social network. And I have a blog post on my site that's titled How to Use the New Social Network Peach. Someone could find my page because I've made the search engines aware of my content. But as I said, the sitemap is a very technical document. I wouldn't create one manually. It's complex. There's going to be plugins that do that for you. So I won't be able to add a sitemap at the moment. So I won't fill that in. Um, it asks then here, when do you see the most traffic to your site? The point of that is that the search engine is going to, Bing and Google are going to check on your site once in a while. Therefore, they're going to be connecting to your site and uh, you know, causing traffic on your site. And if you get a certain amount of traffic from other people at a certain time, your site may slow down because Google is accessing it and Bing is accessing it and your users are accessing it. So if we tell Bing the busiest part of the day local time of my business is 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Bing or Google will not browse your site as heavily at those times so that your site doesn't slow down. But I've just started this. I don't know what time is the most traffic of, of the day. So probably by default we'll leave it as all day, and as we get the data coming through, eventually we could change this and it might be more effective because my, my site can be more efficient. So I didn't really change anything here except adding my site. Click Add. And this is what prevents you from spying on your competitor's data or your competitor spying on your data. Because I could have added my competitor's website right here. And what's to stop me from seeing that data is this screen here. I have three possible options. I only have to do one of them. But I've got three possible options to verify to Bing and later to Google that this is my website, show me my data. We have three possible ways. I'm going to say completely forget option three. This way is complicated, even I don't do this. So forget number three. We've got one and two. I'll talk in general about how to do one and two, and then we'll pause to help you do it if you are able to do it right now. Number one is, it's saying, download this file, this Bing site authorization file, and then upload it to your website. Come back to Bing and click the verify button at the bottom here. Bing will then go to your website and look for that file, and if it finds it, you're verified. You've proved it because you cannot log into your competitor's website and upload a file for the search engine to verify. Only the owner of that website, only you as an owner, can do that to upload this file. That's one way. The other way is you could log into your website as if you're going to make a change. Remember last week I said you might have a couple different logins to your website. This is the other kind of login. You log into your website to update something on your website, and it's saying here, copy this meta tag, copy this one line of code, copy it, and paste it into the code of your website, 
Again, I can't edit another website's code. I can only edit my own website's code. I'm going to copy the specific code for my account on Bing and paste it into the code of my website. I come back to Bing. I click Verify. Bing will check for that code. It'll say, great, verified. And now I'll get my data. This sort of procedure is just about the same on Google when we get to Google. This is our concept in general. I'm going to pause the recorder. If you're, if you're able to do this, I highly recommend it. Raise your hand. I'll come over for you to actually do it, and we'll proceed. First come, first serve. You raise your hand.